I'd like to start by asking you a question. What qualities do great leaders have in common? In normal times, we'd be together in an auditorium and I could ask for some audience participation. Due to the pandemic, that's not possible this year, but I encourage you to share your answers with your dog or cat. On my end, to set the right atmosphere, I've taken inspiration from Major League Baseball and have set up my own cardboard cutout audience here in Boston. Thank you, Michael and Allison, for braving the weather of the stands to be here today. But back to my initial question, what qualities do great leaders share in common? They take initiative, they cultivate emotional intelligence, they communicate frequently and openly, and they're flexible. These characteristics of a successful in-person leader are the same characteristics that make a successful remote leader. If you hire someone with these qualities, they will succeed, whether they work in the office or from home. Zip codes should not matter when you're looking for a leader in the next normal. For more than six years, I've been a remote worker working from home in Massachusetts. In 2014, my husband and I moved to the Boston area to be closer to family. I was looking for a job and NSF OIG was looking for an attorney. It was a match made in IG heaven and I'm grateful that my office decided to make me their first fully remote investigative employee. During most of my time as a remote employee, I had only one adorable office mate. This is Cody, my dog. Fast forward to April of 2020. This is me on the phone with a colleague, a federal prosecutor, and a subject's defense counsel negotiating the details of a multi-million dollar civil settlement. We got the deal done, but it was, as you can see, a lot more complicated. This is not normal, and this is not what remote work will look like in the new normal. But if we can get work done from home under these circumstances, think what we can do when the pandemic and its challenges are in the rearview mirror. Organizations across the country have begun to recognize the benefits of remote work to themselves and to their employees. For example, Twitter announced in May of this year that it would allow its employees who can work from home to do so indefinitely. Many other companies have followed suit. Before now, we might have believed that the IG mission did not allow for this type of flexible, innovative work structure. But the ability of the IG community to continue to conduct high quality oversight work the last eight months shows us just the opposite. Let's ask ourselves today, how can we, the IG community, take a page from these other organizations and continue to build on the benefits and momentum we've gained through more remote work in recent months. Before continuing, I wanna point out that remote work in the next normal does not have to be an all or nothing proposition, nor does it have to look the same at every agency. And for the skeptics out there, I will address some common hesitations about remote, remote work in a few minutes. Now I'd like to highlight a few of the benefits to organizations that embrace remote work. The first is access to a broader nationwide talent pool. If you are open to remote leaders and employees, you are no longer limited to those within the DC area. Embracing a nationwide talent pool could build teams with different viewpoints outside the DC bubble, which can lead to better problem solving and more effective results. I challenge the managers and leaders in the audience to consider remote leadership at higher levels in the new normal and to incorporate it into your succession planning. Think outside of the box, or rather, outside the Beltway. Limiting your leadership candidates to those that live within the Beltway is ruling out 99.4% of the U.S. population. Think about that. The IG community is missing out on a lot of potential if we are not considering remote and field employees as possible leaders in our organizations. Spreading leadership across the country can help us stay more connected to the public we serve and give the organization a broader perspective. The second benefit is that remote work makes an organization more attractive to the next generation. Millennials and Gen Z workers are looking for flexibility, work-life balance, and a career with meaning. Remote work is a sought after benefit and other employers like Twitter and Microsoft will be offering it. But the IG community has one big leg up on many of these private companies. Our mission is focused around making a difference. That combined with the flexibilities of remote work could make a career in the IG community doubly attractive to the next generation. And in addition to being an attractive recruitment benefit, remote work will also help the IG community retain its workers. According to a study by OWL Labs, companies that embrace remote work have 25% lower employee turnover than companies that don't. Third, employees will be more productive. 
The pandemic has shown that remote teams can be equally as productive as in-person teams and have the potential to be even more productive in the next normal. My office did not skip a beat during the transition to remote work. We hit 96% of our timeliness goals from mid-March to mid-October this year, a 7% increase over the previous 12 months. Looking more broadly at the IG community, nearly 1,400 reports were uploaded to oversight.gov between April 1st and September 30th of this year. That's only 14 less than were uploaded to the site the six months prior. This was all while facing the unique challenges of a global pandemic. Despite these challenges, we were able to show that you can get a lot done, even when working in teams, even when senior leaders are working from different locations, and even when working in a field where relationship building is key. Fourth, organizations that embrace remote work have happier, more present employers. Now, many of you may be saying, wait a minute, I am not happier right now. I am more stressed working from home. To those of you that are struggling, I hear you. 2020 has been a rough year for many. Some would say 2020 has been a rough 10 years and it's not even over yet. The global pandemic has eroded traditional support networks and routines. We need to recognize that working from home now is not the same as what remote work will look like in the new normal or what it looked like for me the last six years. We will have childcare again. Anxiety about the pandemic will go down. You will be more able to set up a quiet, separate workspace. In the new normal, the challenges of the pandemic will fade while the increased flexibility and time savings of working at home will stay. Working remotely permits greater flexibility in where to live, when to work, and how to manage your work and life. It allows leaders to live closer to the public they serve and near where they have family and community support networks. I, for example, did not have to choose between living close to family and working in an OIG. I can further the IG, IG mission while literally living next door to my sister and her family. While living that close to family may be a little too close for you, the arrangement has worked well for us. It brings me tremendous joy to watch my daughter play with her cousins on a daily basis. When you don't have to spend two plus hours commuting each day, you have more energy to tackle work and everything else in your life. What would you do with two more hours today? Sometimes I spend this extra time on work and sometimes I spend it playing with my daughter or doing other activities that give me energy, energy that I bring with me to work. And it isn't just me. One colleague in the IG community shared that she is now able to pick her son up from daycare and take an hour long walk together every evening when she otherwise would have been on the train. Stress can kill. In the long term, better work-life balance is beneficial to employees and employers. Now again, some of you may be saying, wait a minute, working from home right now has led to less work-life balance. I am never unplugged from work. I could give a whole separate talk about setting healthy boundaries while working remotely and we'd be happy to continue this conversation with anyone that's interested at a later date, but it can be done in the new normal. I too was tempted to work late every night and keep my work phone at hand all the time when I first started out. But over the years and with practice, I have set boundaries that work for my organization and that protects my personal time. Once you establish healthy boundaries, the time save can be spent on other meaningful activities. This leads to more present, engaged, and energized leaders and employees. The fifth benefit, something near and dear to our community's core mission of promoting economy and efficiency, remote work is cost effective. I live in a city with a cost of living that's less than DC, and NSFOIG doesn't pay for office space, utilities, or parking or tra transit subsidy, subsidy for me. These cost savings come as my teams and I brought in recoveries that annually averaged more than five times my cost in terms of salary and benefits. Global Workplace Analytics estimated that a typical employer could save about $11,000 a year per employee that spends just half their time teleworking due to increased productivity, lower real estate costs, and reduced absenteeism and turn turnover. Embracing remote work could also be a means to implement OMB's Reduce the Footprint Policy. Now, despite all these benefits, many of you may still be hesitant to boldly leap into the next normal involving remote work and leadership. There are several elephants in the room that you may have thought of regarding remote work. Most are beyond the scope of the talk today due to time constraints, but I'm happy to continue this conversation and discuss strategies for addressing these hesitations at a later time. 
I will be providing my contact information at the end of the talk and encourage you to reach out. For today, let's focus on busting three common myths that keep organizations from embracing remote work. Unfortunately for the pyromaniacs in the audience, this Mythbusters, unlike the TV show, won't involve any dramatic explosions. First, there's the belief that workers will be less productive without a supervisor physically watching them in the same space. To the supervisors in the audience, I ask, when everyone was in the office, did you spend eight hours a day hovering over your employees' shoulders to see what they were working on? I would venture a guess that the answer is no. As discussed earlier, the pandemic has shown that productivity is not inherently tied to being physically in an office. Mercer recently conducted a survey of 800 employees. 94% said their company's productivity was the same or higher than it was before the pandemic, even with many employers, employees working from home. Engaged employees do not need someone constantly looking over their shoulders. Good leadership, remote or in person, is knowing when to step back so your team can excel. Second, there's a related concern that employees will shirk hours. This really comes down to whether or not you trust your employees. If you can't trust your employees, you have a bigger problem than whether they can effectively work remotely. Generally speaking, it's pretty clear whether a person is getting their work done or not, even if you're not in the same physical space, through email traffic, meetings, and whether their cases or projects are moving. If you're concerned, you can set up a regular check-in and think of it as the digital equivalent of walking around the office to say hello. And if that's not enough, in today's day and age, most agencies log extensive IT data about when folks log in and out. Thus, there's a clear record if issues do occur. One key to overcoming both of these myths is training. Gallup research indicates that manage managers have a disproportionate influence on whether employees have what they need to succeed when working remotely. Organizations need to invest in training to build confidence in supervising remote employees. Training at all levels specific to the remote environment can help ensure that everyone is able to apply their leadership, communication, and team building skills to this arrangement. Third, perhaps the biggest hesitation to embracing remote work is the belief that you can't effectively build or maintain relationships remotely. While it's true that my solo holiday office parties are always a bit dull, overall I have been able to build on and maintain strong relationships with my colleagues despite being over 450 miles away. Technology has come a long way in recent years. Through regularly scheduled check-in calls and Zooms with my supervisor and AIGI, we have developed and maintained strong relationships despite my remote status. Comparing notes with my colleagues, in fact, I have actually had more face and phone time with the managers in my organization than many of my peers who are physically in the office. Since we switched to monthly Zoom meetings instead of phone calls, I've been able to more effectively collaborate and break down silos with members of the Office of Audit located in Colorado and Virginia. As Stan discussed in his talk, maintaining connection with your remote team requires initiative and frequent communication. But virtual tools such as Zoom, Skype, and Teams make such interactions only a click away. And in the new normal, it's important to emphasize that travel will be possible again to supplement all of these virtual tools. Remote employees can make periodic trips back to headquarters to solidify relationships developed online, as I did in pre-pandemic times. We can travel to conduct site visits and other work that requires a physical presence, just as in-person employees would travel to such engagements from headquarters. So, after discussing the benefits and some common myths of remote work, I ask you again, how can we, the IG community, continue to build on the benefits and momentum we've gained through remote work during the pandemic? Our transition to the next normal will not happen overnight. It will take time and trial and error to figure out how to customize remote work to fit the specific circumstances of each agency and its staff. But we don't have to start from scratch or do this alone. Let's learn from each other and leverage what is already working at our individual agencies. What is your agency doing to embrace remote work and capitalize on the benefits we've discussed today? I'd be interested in knowing what has and has not worked at your agency. Let's talk about how we could use our experience, our collection of best practices and lessons learned to further inform the community's efforts. Here's how you can reach me if you'd like to continue this conversation. In closing, Embracing remote leadership in the next normal can bring tremendous benefits to the IG community. Going forward, I encourage you to think outside the box, 
and outside the Beltway. Thank you.